Let me start off by saying that the video that you're about to watch is really intended for a very limited audience. Uh, if you have a version of QCT that has the screen that I'm showing right now, keep watching. Any other version of QCT, you're wasting your time, and I'll explain why in a minute. If you're using QCT version 4, QCT version 5, or any of the other versions of QCT6, in other words, if I click on Try Other Product Tiers, if you're running QCT6 Gold, QCT6 Pro, or QCT6 Plus, this video is not for you. If you are running QCT, um, basically the lowest possible level, level of QCT version 6, then keep watching. If you have this version of QCT, you're probably already aware that the functionality in this version is very limited. Uh, you can only do edge-to-edge -edge quilting, for example, as the screen shows here. Um, you've probably also realized that as you're building and setting up your pantos to a quilt, you don't have the ability to save it. When you close down QCT, all your work is gone. Um, the other thing you cannot do with QCT6 bottom layer is import third-party pantographs from an external source, say from an Urban Elements or a Wasatch Quilting or an Anne Bright, one of those places. Um, that's what this video is here to address. It's going to show you a somewhat crude way, but a way nonetheless that you can use to actually import third-party pantos into QCT. So this is going to involve a little bit of technical knowledge of Windows. I'm going to try to explain things as much detail as I can, but you will be working outside of QCT to set this all up. There is no functionality within QCT that allows you to do this. So we're going to kind of get into the innards, if you will, of QCT to actually get this set up and be, have the ability to, uh, to um, um, import third-party pantos. So with that, Let's get started. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to exit out of QCT. Like I said, the vast majority of what we're going to do is outside of QCT. And I'm going to open up my internet browser. And by the way, I'm working off of a laptop at the moment. I am not working off of the QCT tablet. Uh, if you watched our other videos and seen some of the documentation from the Grace Company, they pretty much strongly encourage that you don't put your QCT tablet on the internet any more than necessary for a couple of reasons. The most obvious of which is you don't want to have your, Q your QCT tablet on the internet while you're quilting something and have Windows decide, oh, this tablet needs to have a Windows update. I'm going to stop everything and download the update and mess up your pattern. So, so what I'm going to do is, at least for the purposes of this video, I'm going to use my laptop to obtain the patterns of, of, off of Urban Elements, off the third-party vendor. And then from there, we're going to use the tablet to actually show you how you get it, how you get this on the tablet. And one of the other things I'm going to need is a, a thumb drive. This is the thumb drive I have. Um, I'm going to insert this into my, into my computer. Let me do that right now. In fact, I'm going to show you what happens. Um, I'm using Windows 10. Windows 11 is similar. So you'll have at the bottom of your screen probably something at the bottom that looks like a little manila folder. If you click on that, it opens up something called File Explorer. I'm going to blow my screen up so you can see all the details of it. And you'll see that I've got this um, C drive as what is referred to as basically this laptop, although everything that's on it. D is, if I, if I put a CD-ROM in or a DVD, that's what that is. I'm going to insert my jump drive into my laptop. And it makes a little happy noise. And you'll see it created a USB drive. This is where we are going to take the the uh, pantos that we download and insert them, and I'll show you how to how to do that how to do that in a minute. So I'm going to open up my web browser, and I use Firefox. It can be any web browser. It could be Microsoft Edge. It can be Chrome or Brave or any of the popular ones. Doesn't matter. And I am going to go into www.urbanelementz.com as an example. Um, I'm going to use this website to download um, a Panto, and then we'll see how, what we can do to load this thing into QCT6 bottom level. So every website's a little different. This particular website for Urban Elements, I'm going to click on Quilting Designs and click on Digital Paper End-to-End -end Pantographs. And then under Subcategories, my favorite one is Free. 
I love free. Free is so convenient for, for demo purposes. So let's scroll down and see what we have to choose from here. So you'll see that within the Urban Elements website, I have got many choices to choose. Um, I'd like to show you a few things. I'd like to show you what you probably want to veer away from. And I'm going to jump to uh, page three on this page. This particular pattern here called Fleur de Lis. Let's take a look at this one. Um, one of the other restrictions that the bottom layer of QCT6 does not let you do is stagger. Um, it, it did this particular example here, you see that it shows one row um, kind of lined up this way, and then the next row is kind of offset from the previous row. This particular pattern only delivers as a single row. So if you want to be able to achieve this effect with this pattern, you need to be able to stagger it. Unfortunately, uh, QCT6 bottom layer does not allow you to do the staggering feature. All you're going to be able to do is line them up one on top of another, which is means which means you're going to have a whole lot of white space in between. Probably want to avoid this one. Now, again, if you get, go with one of the higher layers of QCT6, then you can stagger and you're fine. So this is one that if you want to avoid heartburn, don't buy it. The other one I would like to show, I'm going to go back to the first page here. Um, this particular one called Nylon. This one looks like it's a stagger. It really isn't. I'm just going to click on it and show it for demo purposes. Um, you'll see that this actually does ship as a two-row panel. So it does actually correctly print the staggering as two rows at a time. So from that point of view, you're, you're fine. The issue with this one, though, is in the fine print. If you take a look at the fine print for this particular item, it says here that this particular multiple-row file, which is what it is, um, comes in lengths of 44, 68, 94, 124 inches long. They are preset dimensions. Um, it also gives the, uh, the recommendation that you do not resize these dimensions. This is another area where you're going to find yourself having a few issues. Just something to keep in the back of your mind when you're selecting the pattern to use. So let me go back to the main screen here. Go back to page one. Let's pick one that doesn't have any staggering requirements. And then that kind of, just for purpose, it may not be the prettiest pattern in the world, but at least we can kind of play with it. I'm going to pick Mandolin. So what I'm going to do is within the Urban Elements website, I'm going to click this thing. Okay. I'm then going to say it's free. I ain't got to buy it. If you were going to purchase it, it would ask for a credit card and all that stuff. Um, we're going to skip around all that. We're ready to download. So I'm going to click on digital download. I'm going to click where it says here. Now you'll see what it wants to do is save this thing to something on my laptop. Well, guess what? I'm going to save it. If I scroll down, we took a look at all my things and I've got this thing, USB drive E. I'm going to click on that. And right now it doesn't see anything. There's nothing there, nothing that it's worth working with. Um, I want to create a place to put it. Now I could do a couple of things. I could either just click save. And it's going to rent. It's going to stick it on the what we call to the root or the top of the USB drive. I I personally like to organize my files a little bit. I want I want to be clear where the file came from and what I'm working with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my mouse pointer into this area, click the right mouse button, and you see the word new come up. I'm going to do a new. I want to create a folder. A folder, for those of you, again, if you're not familiar with Windows, it's just that. It's like a collection of documents or a collection of things within like a manila type uh, element. And it kind of looks like a folder when you think about it. So I'm going to click on New Folder. I'm going to give it a name. And the way I like to do it, I like to just keep up with where I purchased all my patterns. So I'm going to create a top-level folder. I'm just going to name it Urban Elements with a Z. Hit Enter. Then what I'm going to do is I want to I want to keep playing with this. So I'm going to double click Ur Urban Elements, and it gives me that right now. You'll see from US, USB drive E, I am now within the Urban Elements folder. You can use this this bar to let, kind of let you know where you're at within your particular folder. I'm going to repeat my process. I'm going to right click again in that space and click New Folder. And now I'm going to do the name of my pattern, Mandolin and hit enter. All right. Double click on mandolin. All right. Uh, at this point, I'm going to actually save my document into this folder. So if I click save, it's got a name called mandolin.zip. And I'll explain what zip is in just a minute. But for the moment, I'm going to save it. Okay. And I've saved it. So now I can close this down. Uh, if I have done this correctly, I should be able to click on File Explorer. And within Urban Elements, 
mandolin. There's my mandolin.zip. And here now you see I'm back in File Explorer, so I can see all the details of that. All right, so now I've actually downloaded something from Urban Elements that I did not pay for into something called mandolin.zip. All right, well, what did I download? Well, let's take a look. I'm going to, within Windows Explorer, again, I'm still on my laptop now, so everything is within my laptop. I'm going to double click. And I'm seeing a whole bunch of what I suppose you could think of as garbage. Well, this is actually all somewhat meaningful to QCT. And so the trick now is to understand what it is that you need to pull out of this zip file and copy it in the QCT. Um, basically, everything's got the same name on it, followed by a different three character or four character extension on the end. And every one of these has got meaning for it. The one that you just, that just is kind of at the outset, the one that you'll probably find most meaningful if you want to just print off a hard copy of it is the one called PDF, Portable Document Format. If I double click on this, what this is going to show is, and bear with me a moment, I've got a slow laptop. This is pretty much what I downloaded. I downloaded this thing called Mandolin, and this is something that if I had a printer attached to my laptop, I could print it off and send it to a printer, stick it in a notebook if I wanted to have a copy of it. This lets me see the actual um, picture of what it looks like and kind of how it, how it forms and all that stuff. So this is a good thing to actually print off. Um, I'm gonna exit out of this and go back to my folder. And bear with me, my laptop's a little, a little on the slow side. Okay. Um, now, you're looking for files. There's a, there's a few files you want to look for to actually make your life a little easier within QCT. Ideally, what you want to do, if you see a file called a GPF file, this is the format that, that QCT likes the best. If you see this file, you want to grab onto that, and I'll show you what to do with that in a second. At the same time, if you see another file that's got the GPF BMP extension, then you want to grab that as well. What I'm going to do is I am going to hold the shift key down on my computer and click on GPF and GPF BMP. And what it's done, you see both of them have highlighted. So these are files that I can do something with within Windows. Um, I don't know. I'm not. I don't know what yet. But at least I've got them both selected. So this is your perfect situation. This is the format that that, that QCT likes the best. If, however, you don't have files with GPF, you're not out of luck. There are other file formats you can use, and I'm going to experiment with this a little bit. So while we're in here, I'm also going to grab. I'm going to hold my Control key down and click on CQP. That's another format that's useful for QCT and QLI. And what I'm going to do with these, I am going to put my cursor in the, in the highlighted area, right click. I'm going to do a copy. And then from there, I am going to back out of the zip and go back to where mandolin is. And then from within that, I'm going to right click again and do paste. If you think about it, what I've done is I've taken these four elements out of that funky zip thing and put it into the same high level directory as mandolin is in. You want to do this, especially when you go over to your tablet, because the tablet is going to be a little funky when it deals with the actual zip file. You'll find that your life is a little bit easier if you're dealing with uh, files outside of a zip. And we're going to experiment with these, these four file types and see what we can do with QCT. So effectively, what I've shown you now is part one of this process. I have got these things copied onto my zip drive and copied onto my USB drive. Um, you you want to kind of keep these files in the USB drive as a rule because what we're going to very effectively do is we're going to copy them onto the QCT tablet. But when we do that, um, it, it's, this will be effectively a backup. So that if you update QCT down the road, QCT, again, we're kind of doing stuff behind the scenes. That's not going to know what you've done. And it could very likely wipe out everything if you have updated to another version. Let's say QCT 6 bottom level came out with an update. So to ensure that you don't lose anything, as long as it's sitting on this USB drive, you're going to be in good shape. So that's part one. We've gotten the files from the third-party vendor. Oh, and one last thing. Um, Urban Elements makes it easy. 
they basically give you that zip file that's got everything in it. Not all the vendors work that way. Some of the vendors, I think Ann Bright is one, don't hold me to this, I haven't downloaded from her in a while, but she makes you choose the file you want at purchase time. She's gonna ask you, what format do you want? Do you want it in GPF? Do you want it in CQP or QLI or some one of those other names? And so you've got to pick the one that um, that that uh, you could you wish to purchase. If you're forced into that, again, your number one choice is GPF. If you can get that, that's that's the perfect solution. If not GPF, your next choice is going to be CQP. That's actually the one that that Grace recommends uh, if you don't have a C GPF available. And then the third one that we've used quite a bit is QLI. That works as well. Um, so make sure you, you purchase one of those. And when you download off of their website, make sure you do pretty much what we just did here. Create a directory on a thumb drive, a USB drive, um, uh, uh, copy the file into that directory. And then that, that file will be sitting on the USB drive ready to load onto the tablet. So now that we've done this, our next job is going to be loading this file into the tablet. So I'll show you how to do that in just a second. Okay, we are now on the tablet that normally controls uh, the Cunique 21 Elite uh, in the other room. Taking it off and brought it in here so I can set a camera up and kind of show things a little bit. Um, going to show you now how to load what we downloaded off of the Urban Elements or the third-party vendor site onto the tablet for QCT version 6 bottom tier. Um, notice that we are in airplane mode. As I said earlier, we like to, as much as possible, keep the tablet offline. Um, we also don't need to have the tablet connected to the, uh, to the 21 Elite. Um, for the purposes of installing the third-party vendor uh, um, Panto. Um, and you probably can't even connect it, have it anyway. This particular tablet only has one USB port on it. So even if there was, if it was, if it was sitting on the machine right now, I still have to disconnect the machine so that I could plug the USB in. So that's what I'm about to do right now. So, but first, um, what I'm gonna do is you see I've got QCT Base 6 running. If you look at the bottom of the screen, You'll see my icons and look, I've got the same little manila folder that I had on my laptop. So I'm going to double click, bring me into the file manager, file explorer that I was looking at on my laptop and this is running Windows 10 as well. It's the exact same software. If you take a look right now, the only thing I have is my C drive, which we talked about earlier. That's pretty much everything that's on the tablet. I'm going to take my USB, I'm gonna plug it in to the USB port on the tablet. Okay, and you'll see, look, we've got a USB drive that showed up on the, on the computer. Now, this one's called D. On my laptop, it was called E. Um, doesn't matter what the letter is, as long as you can see the USB drive, you're good to go. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to double click with my finger, USB drive D. All, you see, I've got all kinds of stuff on here. It's more than just what we saw in the demo. What I really want to do is effectively focus on what it is I loaded. What I loaded was the Urban Elements directory. What I'm going to do is, I'm like I said, there, there's many different ways you can do it. The way I'm going to go about it, I'm going to tap Urban Elements, and you'll see it kind of highlights this little check mark. I'm then going to hold my finger there for a second, and then I get a bunch of options, similar to what we saw on the laptop. I'm going to do a copy. I'm gonna click copy. So that basically indicates that I'm gonna take Urban Elements and I'm gonna copy it someplace. Where am I gonna copy it? Well, this is where the, uh, the internals of QCT, where we're gonna play around a little bit. So I'm going to double click on the local disk C, basically the drive where all the data is loaded on the tablet. Bear with bear my hand here, I'm gonna double click. All right. Um, you'll probably see something a bit more simpler on your tablet than I have here. Uh, we get beta versions of QCT, but you should only have, if you take a look at everything that's in the C drive, you should have one folder out there called Powered by QuiltCAD. You're gonna take your finger, get it right here. There we go. Powered by QuiltCAD, and you'll see this is where I've lined up. I'm at QCT, local C, uh, this PC, local drive, C drive, powered by QuiltCAD. Within that, I'm gonna to go to something called Patterns. Click on Patterns. Okay, so I'm in the Patterns section now. Now I'm gonna click on Edge to Edge. 
double click that. All right, so these are pretty much all the patterns that I have to work with within QCT base level version six. You'll see that I've got a bunch of patterns that come preloaded. This is what you normally get with QCT. And they all have that GPF extension on it. Um, and you'll also see there's like two of everything. There's a GPF and then a GPF with a BMP on the end. Everyone's got two. One's got the G. Now the, the distinction is the GPF is the actual um, coded information that QCT understands in order to create the, uh, the pattern on the tablet. The BMP is the actual picture. If you want to see what it looks like, that's what the BMP is. That's what else two are, all, are, are kind of in lockstep. Uh, with the GPF and the BMP together, it allows you to, to see what the pattern looks like and QCT will understand what to do with it if you decide to sele select it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold my finger down randomly somewhere in the space and get my menu back. And you'll see of the menu, I've got something called paste. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit paste. Now that urban elements that I took off of my thumb drive, my USB drive, is now loaded onto this tablet. Now I could have done this many different ways. I did this at the highest level. I could have, say, if I just double click on urban elements, you see I've got mandolin in there. Maybe I've got multiple things. I've got mandolin and I've got feathers and I've got porcupine or whatever they're all called. I could have just as easily just copied them one at a time and put them somewhere if I wanted to. Entirely up to you. For demo purposes, I just wanted to have everything in the same location, which is why I decided to put everything under urban elements. So notice I've I've got all these patterns. I've got this Carlo Jerome, Leah Day, Urban Elements. Keep that in mind. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to minimize this by clicking the little yellow line there to make this smaller. And now I'm back to QCT base level version six. Well, let's take a look at what we've done. I'm going to click edge to edge. I'm going to make the assumption you know a little bit about how edge to edge works. I'm not, this isn't really a training course on how to actually use it. It's really more a training course on how to get these third party patterns loaded in. So it says welcome. I'm going to click next. Um, you normally within this version, it's got all kinds of super helpful stuff in it where you would normally, uh, if I had my machine connected, I'd be uh, setting the safe area, my top left and my bottom right. I'm just going to, since I'm not connected to the machine anyway, I'm just gonna click and let the thing default to whatever number it's gonna use. Again, I really don't care at this point. I'm just gonna select that. It's then gonna take me down to bottom right. And again, I'm, I don't have a machine, so I'm just gonna take its default and go with that. Okay, here's the fun part. We're at the point in QCT bottom level six where I get to select my design. I think you can probably see where I'm going with this. I'm gonna select my design, hit that button. And look, I've got all these items that we saw in that E2E directory that we were looking at. Carlo Jerome and Leah Day, and there's what I just loaded in there, Urban Elements. So if I double click this, Mandolin, hey, I'm happy to see that. Double click that. And if you look, I've got three files in here. I've got the GPF file with the picture that shows what it looks like. I've also got the CQP and the QLI. If you remember, I copied all, all of those at the same time. And I also copied that BMP file as well. What we're seeing here with the GPF is, this is the file that QCT likes the best, the GPF, and it's got the pretty picture. So if I select this and do an open, there we go, here's my mandolin. And I'm ready to move on to my next step of, okay, what am I gonna do with this? Well, I'm gonna, you know, space it out, line it all up and do all that fancy stuff I'm gonna do. All right, so again, that's the perfect situation. And you notice that opened up fairly quick. It wasn't a whole lot of detail around that. So it opened up and now I can start playing with it. Um, for the point of reference, I'm just gonna select the design. I'm gonna go back to Urban Elements and Mandolin. Uh, if I didn't have the GPF floating around, I've got, still got CQP and QLI. What if I pick CQP and hit open? Open up the exact same thing. I wouldn't know the difference. The only difference is, and you've already seen this, number one, I didn't get the picture of it before I started. So I don't know what I'm selecting until I select it and it actually opens this up. Uh, you also noticed it took a little longer to load. What the system is doing is, it, it's again, it's, it's ideal is something that's in a GPF format. So what the system is doing, it's taking that CQP file 
turning it internally into a GPF and opening it up. Because it has to do those extra calculations, it takes a little bit longer to load. Um, if I go to Urban Elements and just do the exact same thing with the QLI, hit the open. Again, you notice it's taking a little bit longer, but it opens up the file and it's I've got the QLI file opened. But now, like I said, if I go back to the what I originally started with, the GPF and open that, you'll see that it opens fairly quickly. You also notice it's kind of shifted a little bit. Part of the conversion process as it's converting from QLI or CQP into the GPF, it may take some liberties with how it's determining how this thing spaces. That's a little something you just have to kind of deal with. It's, it's, it, uh, it's not necessarily going to calculate out the exact same thing every single time. So that is how you actually can get manual files from a third party vendor into QCT. Um, again, can't stagger. So as I go through and line this all up, I can't shift anything left or right. So I, I've got to take it the way it is. I can adjust sizes and I can do a few, I can, there's a few things that, again, the actual training in this explains, but I can't stagger it. All the last thing I want to show, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into file manager, go back into the urban elements directory, mandolin. Now, as I said, we got the two files, the GPF and the BMP. Um, GPF is the ideal. You may or may not have a BMP file to go with it. Again, every vendor is a little different. Urban Elements is very nice. It gives you both. If you don't have the B, you have the GPF file, but not the corresponding BMP file. I'm going to kind of simulate that here by I'm going to select it and then put my finger down to get my menu up. I had trying to hit that little thing on the bottom just so I can do delete. So I've deleted it out of the directory. Now, if I go back into QCT and do my select design, urban elements, mandolin, okay, I lose my picture. The GPF file is still there, but what I don't have is the ability to see what it is. I can still select it. If I select it, open it up, it still opens pretty quick. Again, GPF is really what, what, what QCT wants to work with. So it's a fairly quick open, but what I lose without that BMP file is the ability to actually uh, see what it looks like before I select it. Again, limitation of the base layer of QCT, QCT version six. So I hope you found this useful. Again, it's it's uh, you know a little clunky, I suppose, but it does give you the ability to actually get third party vendor pantos into the base layer of version six. Now, again, if you have the higher levels of QCT six, that has the batch import file, batch import function. And that will just take whatever format you get and load it into QCT in the correct format. You don't have to go through and jump through any of these hoops that we're doing. And I've got a video out on the, uh, out on YouTube right now that actually shows how to use batch import for those of you that want to learn and don't already know. It was done under version four. Uh, it has not changed. If you have four, five, or six, again, any of the higher level tiers of version six, that video I did on batch import will work just fine. So I hope you found this all useful um, and have a great day, everyone.